Ladies and gentlemen, people around the world watching by live stream, students of the class of 2022. My name is Fraser Cairns, and it's my enormous pleasure as the director of ISL to welcome you to our graduation ceremony today. I've always felt that the build-up to this day starts when I see the first message go out about examination schedules. Those days are long gone, our graduating students have had their final wacky week. They've dressed up like rhinos and charged through the corridors. They've had their last day. They've had their exams. And so this is the final step before they are released into an unsuspecting world. The truth is, of course, that the process is much longer than that. If you regard this as the culmination of schooling, then this is about the last 15 years. Five of the students here today started with us in reception three. A very special welcome to you and to your families. Six of the students joined us in reception three, left, and realized they'd made a terrible mistake, and came back. Very sensible. Eight of the students here joined us for the final two years. So as a group, they have been educated all over the world in a huge mix of rich and diverse schools. And it's amazing to have such diversity. And wherever else they have studied, it's been a privilege to have these young people in our school and to have you here with us today. If you think back for a moment, over all the memories of school or schools, your memories are probably quite different from those of the person sitting next to you. After all, we all plot our own path through something as complex as the primary school playground, the first day in middle school, the hormonal madness that is puberty, making subject choices in year 11 that you mistakenly believe will shape your future life but your memories will also somehow be the same. You all had your first day at school as a teeny-weeny person. You all made that first friend. You all discovered things that you loved and things that you were less enamored with. For the students here today, amongst those memories are things that bind them as a group. Probably they don't know this to be true yet, but those shared experiences are incredibly precious things, things to be held on to. Last year, because of COVID, we did two graduation ceremonies. And at the time, I did a quick calculation on the back of an envelope and worked out that those were my 32nd and 33rd graduations. And so this is my 34th graduation. But it's also, I realize, uh, actually my first the reason is that in the past, I've always watched on, and I've watched with enormous pride, but I watched as a teacher. And for the first time, I am here as a parent too. I am still proud, hugely so. Perhaps, however, for the very first time, I understand the sense of relief that seems to emanate from the audience, and the fact that from time to time, behind me, I could hear someone say, oh, thank God. It always strikes me that whatever path a student has followed to this point, and whatever their path from this point onwards, the young people on the stage today have a potential to bring about change that they are, for the most part, blithely unaware of. 
any one of the young people here today can bring about extraordinary change for themselves and for others. And I encourage them to do just that. An education like the one at ISL gives you the opportunity to choose rather than be chosen for. And that is an amazing privilege. So choose to show compassion. Choose not to blindly accept what others say or what you read. Choose to recognize that things work out best for those who make the best of how things work out. And so my congratulations on having made it well done. In graduating from ISL, you join a select group, a group that has the capacity in big or small ways to change how we all see the future for the better, a group of which the school and in everybody in this room is incredibly and rightly proud. So, well done. It's now my pleasure to welcome Sylvain Chovana, the chair of the ISL board. Sylvain. Well done. Thank you, Fraser. Graduates, did you, do you know that you collectively have 644 years of learning experience at ISL? And did you know that 644 years ago, in the 14th century, humanism as a momentum uh, started to gain momentum? Humanism promoted the idea that one was the center of their universe and that people should embrace achievements in education, arts, literature, and science. And do you know what might happen 644 years from today, in the 27th century? According to a report by the United Nations, the future may be marked by longevity, with an expected life, uh, life expectancy of 100 years. And an article in the National Geographic suggested that everyone born will have IQs so high they'll be unlike anything we have seen before. And all this will require a lot of achievements in education, arts, literature, and science. And that brings us here today to connect the past and the future. And to put you, class of 2022, in the center of our universe and to celebrate your achievement in education. As the board, we believe that the school's holistic program has prepared you for the journey after ISL. You know about learning, about getting things done on time, about connecting with new people. ISL will be here for many more years in the future. And as a lifetime member of the ISL alumni body, you have an open invitation to come back and seek advice, or maybe even give advice. I'm sure the teachers, staff, and students would love to hear from each and every one of you. In closing, I also want to say thank you to the parents and guardians, uh, as you are the center of the ISL's community. And I thank you to the teachers and staff for your dedication to make these ch our children the fine human beings they are today. So, class of 2022, remember, learning, doing, networking. Or, in, to put it in the words of Winston Churchill, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it's the courage that matters. I would like, not, now like to introduce uh, Divya from year 11 and our graduates Marcus, Ethan, and Hong Tang as Sexy Four. They will be playing La Boda de Luis Alonso by Jerónimo Jiménez. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sarah Gifford, the high school principal. And I'm Simon Foley, the secondary school principal. The theme of today is gratitude. It's about reflection and recognizing the end of something special. The IB diploma and its courses are rigorous and demanding. Successfully completing them and high school is something worthy of celebration. Judging by the camera before we started today, I can see that some of you have come in that mood. It is also essential that we pause to mark a milestone in these young people's lives. We are particularly grateful that for the first time since May 2019, we can come together as an entire community to participate in this event. Our graduation ceremony is a personal one, with around 100 words said about each student. Paradoxically, for individual students and their families, each speech will feel too short. For the audience, with 96 graduates today, our ceremony can feel quite long. <laughs> Although we apologize for the length of the ceremony, we believe these fine young people are worth it. We hope it does justice to their efforts, achievements, and their talents. Thank you to our colleagues, in particular, the Year 13 Homeroom team, for contributing anecdotes and fond memories. Whilst the words are our own, they are our inspiration. Thank you also to each graduate, or their parents, who submitted photos for today's ceremony. What you see here today are the best pictures students chose to upload. 
While some of the lighting, content, and composure choices bewilder us as we look at young people born with technology at their fingertips, we recognize that these were the photos they wanted to share with you, and we've done our best to honor this. And so, as our year 13 graduates leave the school they know and love, to embark upon the next stage of their education, we pay tribute to each individual student on behalf of their teachers and the ISL community. They have modeled their, our values, and we know that their honesty, care, and concern for others will allow them to be open to different perspectives, values, and traditions as they journey through life. This afternoon, we proudly celebrate their achievement and fondly remember the unique challenges they have faced along the way. They came to ISL as children and depart as responsible adults and true global citizens. They leave with energy and optimism, good values, and kind hearts. Let's ceremonially launch them into the big wide world, a world that needs their energy and their idealism, their optimism, and their passion. Fittingly, our first graduate today is Tan Vien End. Although she would only perhaps reluctantly admit it, Tanvi loves her school. Just like a good parent, though, this is not the love of blind acceptance. It is more of an authentic but more difficult kind. For Tanvi's care for her school has manifested in working tirelessly to help it become the best version of itself. This has not always been an easy journey. There are times that your intelligence and sense of right allowed you to recognize things before people were willing to listen. Your sense of justice and support for the marginalized in society won't stop when you leave us today for Brown University in the USA where you plan to study sociology, computer science, international relations, or wherever your curiosity takes you in their flexible program. Ladies and gentlemen, Tanvi Anand. Eleftherius, or lefty, as he's known fondly to us, exemplifies what it means to be good-natured. Reflective and sometimes mature, his kindness and social ease will take him far. Much to his mom's relief, maturity and hard work finally caught up with his manners when it counted most. A loyal friend and someone who always can be relied upon, Few have worked harder than Lefty to make sure that his five years at ISL leave him with no regrets and us with great memories. Lefty, we certainly have no regrets having had the pleasure of teaching you, and we wish you all the best as you head to the University of Exeter in the UK to study biological and medicinal chemistry. Ladies and gentlemen, Eleftherius Amelinos. The irony of Felicia is that this delightful, intelligent, and caring young woman, young woman chooses to share her voice so rarely. Those who teach and have taught her are fortunate to understand how engaging and articulate she really is. They will also know that there is nobody who can communicate so much with the raise of an eyebrow. Who needs to talk endlessly? A gap year awaits Felicia as she finds her way to the University of Lausanne to combine working with mastering the French language before continuing her studies. What we know for sure is a young person as gifted as Felicia will be a success whatever she does. Ladies and gentlemen, Felicia Aspergeren. Dylan, we learned the ideal way to ensure students get to homeroom on time, early transportation to school, and some extra time to game with friends. And who could say no to this polite and down-to-earth young person whose teachers adore the fact that he says hello and thank you every lesson? Focused, insightful, and hardworking, Dylan takes on feedback quietly and humbly with a genuine eagerness to improve. A Swiss national who has spent his last three years at ISL Dylan looks forward to permanently living outside of Switzerland. He kicks off this goal with the move to the UK to study international business at Longborough University, where we wish him all the best. 
ladies and gentlemen, Dylan Barefoos. Soraya is an elite athlete who has reached the highest level as a member of the Swiss national team for synchronized swimming. We always suspected that part of Soraya's passion for this ultra-competitive sport was that the sound of music traveling through the water did a great job of drowning out the nagging of the adults in her life. Fiercely independent, intelligent in so many ways, and determined to forge her own path in the world, Soraya likes to leave the others guessing, and what happens next is no different. Potentially a gap year awaits, or perhaps one of the many other options. Whatever happens, we know Soraya will bring her own energy, her enthusiasm, and walk her own path. Ladies and gentlemen, Soraya Bands. A relatively recent addition to ISL, Adrian has quickly assimilated into a close and supportive group of friends, a tight-knit school family that has remained pretty constant for three years. You don't really know a person until you take the time to talk to them. And once Adrian starts, you might be surprised by how much he has to say, and much of it with a dry, ironic sense of humor. He's also a great listener and a loyal friend. A scientist and mathematician with an interest in human nature, Adrian's future will be bright. Our best wishes go with you, Adrian, as the next steps await with the gap year before studying biomedic biomedicine pharmacology at Karolinska Institute in Sweden. Ladies and gentlemen, Adrian Basinski. Proud disruptor of gender norms, Jessie's actions often speak louder than her words. Whether play playing bass guitar, rocking her signature look, or writing video game reviews for the high, Jessie's attitude and engagements always give back to the community. Her contributions bring great joy to those in her presence and showcase the positive influence she has as a strong, independent woman who is not afraid of going against the grain. We expect Jessie will continue to shake things up as she leaves us today to study international relations at the Webster University in Geneva. Ladies and gentlemen, Jessie Baxter. The last of three Beha siblings to graduate from ISL, it is no surprise that Nina, as the youngest child, is a fiercely independent young person who knows her own mind and how to express it. Whilst many will remember her for the beautifully elaborate Wacky Week costumes and the designs that won many an admiring look, her teachers will always think of a dedicated and committed young person who has left little or nothing to chance. Nina's love for creativity means naturally that a gap year degree in fine, after a gap year, a degree in fine arts in the United Kingdom awaits. And so, the last of the Beha legacy, ladies and gentlemen, Nina Beha. Sophia, or Sonia as she's known at school, is always friendly, cheerful, and an absolute pleasure to converse with. Equally loyal and outgoing, you'd be lucky to count her amongst your closest friends. Sophia is a team player in everything she does. Both track star and graceful gymnast, she found a natural flair for hanging upside down in her aerial skills ASA. As she heads to the Netherlands to study business information technology at the University of Twente, we expect this both mentally and physically strong but flexible person to continue taking great strides in life, whether things land right side up or upside down. 
ladies and gentlemen, Sofia Berestovska. Some students have an inner beauty of which many, not lucky if to know them, will be ignorant. Luke epitomizes what it means to be thoughtful and reflective. A deep thinker, perhaps sometimes too deep for his own good, he likes to process things for himself and draw his own conclusions based upon a clear set of values. Respect and consideration for others come high on his list of priorities and creativity and design are top of his list of passions. Luke will further his inquisitive mind with an industrial design at OCAD University, Canada. Given the beauty and depth of his visual arts exhibition, this is a perfect choice. Ladies and gentlemen, Luke Besson. No small detail misses Mark's observant eye. He thinks deeply about the important issues surrounding young people today, and as a longtime member of The High, our school newspaper, writes beautifully and with great courage on these topics. That he is so deeply loved by his close friends and brothers speaks volumes to his character. Gentle, sensitive, and incredibly loyal, Mark's friendship is a beautiful gift that he gives to those near him. Mark leaves us today to head to Toronto, Canada, where he will study history at York University. We wish him all the best. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Besson. No filters needed here, for Ella brings her authentic self wherever she goes. Her ferocious words are only surpassed by her scrupulous principles. Her candor might raise the hair on your neck, but her honesty and ability to stay true to herself will quickly win you over. Highly observant, nothing goes unnoticed by Ella when it comes to student rights. From access to the ping pong tables during list study time to student safety, she actively campaigns for the rights of others. So there is no doubt in our mind that her choice to study law at IE University Spain is well suited to her strengths. Ladies and gentlemen, Ella Blake. <laughs> Creative, independent, and with a swagger all her own, the twinkle at Anna's eye when she's with her trusty sidekicks often leaves you wondering, was that a nice hello? or is there something mischievous going on here? A master in the art studio with gorgeous murals painted in her own edgy style, Anna is, quick, is equally confident hucking 360s on the slopes. In it to win it, Anna is a rare bird amongst her peers. Up at 6 a.m. to run before breakfast on trip days, it's no wonder she operates a coffee shop out of her locker. Caffeine aside, it's her determination and competitive edge that will make take her far as she heads to EPFL or Edinburgh to study mechanical engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, Anna Burday. Matthew Cairns joined ISL in year nine with the awful misfortune of having his dad as the director. <laughs> Luckily, it did not take long for his peers and his teachers to realize that this, or anything else for that matter, can phase Matthew. One of the most naturally academic students I've ever taught, with intelligence and quiet humility in equal measure, we use Matthew to prove to the rest of the class that at least one student understands what we've taught. <laughs> Matthew loves humour, but naturally it is of the intellectual kind. If you don't understand Matthew's jokes, it's not that they aren't funny, you're just not clever enough. 
or the Bath Matthew as you head to the University of Durham to study natural sciences. Maybe they have a comedy club. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Cairns. ISL has been Michael's home for the overwhelming majority of his life. Whilst he grew up quicker than we would have liked, he is a student for whom we also observe genuine care and respect by any teacher who has ever taught him. Michael has a huge heart, but he opens it fully only to those for whom he has genuine care and trust. Whilst he describes himself as confident, ambitious and persistent, we know there is much more to this young man than he shows the world. He will be a great fit for business administration at IE in Spain and at home in its warm and welcoming culture. Before then, a gap year awaits. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Kalantopoulos. Marguerite, or Maggie, was one of the coolest middle school kids we knew. Who else gets to arrive at school each morning on the back of her dad's resplendent silver BMW? <laughs> An academic fighter who has always been a pleasure for us to nurture. Supporting Maggie is a delight. She's endowed with an unshakable positivity and has always been easy to help. We are today as proud of her as we are as any student. Maggie, you did it. It's time now for a six month sabbatical before starting at the Ecole Hotelier de Lausanne in the spring. Ladies and gentlemen, Marguerite Cap de Ville. Reflective and hardworking, it would be hard to find a student more open to taking advice than Marco. Like any ultimate reality video game, dead ends, wrong answers, and every challenge the IB diploma threw his way never deterred Marco from his path to success. He applies the same drive for improvement to everything he does. On the ISL ski team since his early primary days, Marco is a talented and versatile athlete who also competed in tennis and football during his time here at school. This ambitious young person leaves us today for King's College in London to study business management. Ladies and gentlemen, Marco, Marco Cirlotti. <laughs> Meticulous in everything she does, Charlotte is a reflection of her artwork. An interplay of light and dark, use of space and perfect geometrical shapes. With an, with an attitude of, if you're going to do something, you should do it right, she approaches life with careful thought and sincere dedication. Nonetheless, when Charlotte's IB Diploma art exhibit was graffitied by a four-year-old, it was with grace, compassion, and an open mind that she reacted to her now interactive piece of art. There is no doubt that Charlotte's conscientious mind, warm heart, and deep love for Taylor Swift will serve her well as she heads to the UK to study French and Russian at University College London. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlotte Chalet Kovacevic. <laughs> A rambunctious middle schooler who grew up into a serious and studious young man. Perhaps Ethan simply needed to choose the subjects that he studied to unlock his passion. Economics managed to do this, and he's heading to the center of the USA political and economic decision making to take up a place at George Washington University in DC. 
He was quite insistent that one of his most cherished memories of ISL will be his service work with the Hedgehog Protection Society. I'll just leave that there. <laughs> Ethan, when you become the US Treasury or Environmental Secretary in a decade or two from now, I will, I'm confident you'll find a way to continue to support your spiky friends. Ladies and gentlemen, Ethan Chung. Elif has a special way of catching your attention from across the room or on stage with a smile and a sparkle in her eye, almost as if to give you a visual cue of her encouragement and approval. See, she's doing it now. <laughs> Both caring and highly intelligent, she combines her social and emotional agility with a mastery in science and math to give back to our younger students through STEM, through tutoring and role modeling. As a rare human being who both loves and actually vocalizes her love for calculus. She is a pers per persevering problem solver who knows how to think creatively and logically. Elif's dis decision to study biomedical engineering at Imperial College London could not be better suited to her strengths. Ladies and gentlemen, Elif Jebelekulu. Sophia Cornu is one of the most organized, independent, and hardest workers in her year group. She is simultaneously one of the most intelligent and caring. When submitting her activities for the purpose of this very moment, the list itself was about the length of eight student speeches. <laughs> one of the graduates of Mr. Baumgarten's Girls' Computer Coding Weekend when in year nine she now heads to the University of Cambridge in the UK to study computer science. The rest of her form read, after that, I will complete a master's in computer science, either at Cambridge or in London. And later, after taking some work experience, I would like to complete an executive MBA in the United States. Weirdly specific, but we have no doubts. Ladies and gentlemen, Sophia Cornu. Humorous, friendly, and an excellent conversationalist, life is just a little more fun when Ricardo is around. Never one to sulk in the mornings, his teachers appreciate his positive engagement and his carpe diem approach. Whether studying for class or training for basketball or football, he's a master at staying on top of his organization while also living in the moment. As you might have seen from the photos above, he was a leader in bringing back the mullet. He paved the way for others to feel confident in rocking this unique hairstyle that may seem questionable to some. As he heads to the University of Bath to study business, we feel confident that he'll be continuing his trend-setting ways. Ladies and gentlemen, Ricardo Kirti. <laughs> One of, one of the most diligent and determined students a teacher could ever ask for, Lauren is a true inquirer who relishes in the rewards gained from tackling the most challenging path before her. Even in her limited spare time, she works hard to excel at everything she puts her mind to. Being the best baker was too easy. So Lauren upped the ante to become a master vegan baker. Luckily for those of us working in the South Building, she's also incredibly generous. Young for her year, Lauren has more than earned her planned gap year in Canada and Australia, after which she will head to University College London to study medical innovation and enterprise. Ladies and gentlemen, Lauren Cutter. <laughs> Carl Dahan is a natural-born entrepreneur. <laughs> there are three things he loves, business, Lebanon, and speaking with his teachers. 
No lesson ever ends without the obligatory post-class conversation with Carl. And if you're hurry, in a hurry to the next class, he will follow you down the corridor. <laughs> there is no escape. <laughs> I like to tell Carl that he is as good with deadlines as Lebanon is with its, his, its economy. <laughs> and his well-meaning promises remind me of a Beirut treasury bond. There is no doubt that a successful career in business awaits Carl. The next stage of his journey will start at the University of Bath in the UK or Bocconi in Milan. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Dahan. Loyal to the point of being nearly inseparable from her girlfriends, Mira maintained a sense of peace and calm throughout the IB diploma program, despite being one of only a few students taking three sciences at once. Completely unflappable and undeterred from anything in her way, including me re redirecting her attempts to sneak snacks upstairs, uh, Mira's steadfast determination will serve her well in the future. She races an annual fundraising race in the Netherlands to support cancer research. And as she heads to the University of Bologna, Italy to study medicine, we could not be more proud of this steadfast and hardworking young person. Ladies and gentlemen, Mira de Grave. From the moment John willingly joined the entire teaching staff for a day's training on diversity, equity, and inclusion, even before he had officially experienced his first day of school at ISL, we knew we had something special on our hands. His legacy stretches from building the ISL pond to leading our microfinance service project and playing varsity basketball, all done with impeccable manners and an easygoing charm. Jan, you are going to thrive at Bacona University in Milan. One subject wasn't difficult enough for you, so you've decided to study three. Economics, management, and computer science. The reality is, you will excel in all of them. Ladies and gentlemen, Jan Dermichel. What a lovely, honest, and compassionate young person. Miley is an observer, deeply committed to the things she believes in, but also wise enough to know that the things she believes in are never black and white. This talented artist, who is able to connect deeply with her audience on a level well beyond her years, Miley has stayed true to herself during her time at ISL and has become deeply loved and respected for it amongst her peers. If Miley is your friend, you are indeed lucky. We wish Miley all the best as she heads to the Netherlands to study sociology at the University of Amsterdam. Ladies and gentlemen, Miley de Gunji. <laughs> Mike's height might make him a force to be reckoned with on the volleyball court, but it's his humble nature that impresses us every day at school. A strong ally amongst his diverse but tight-knit group of friends, Mike is a fighting spirit that would surprise those who do not know him well. While Mike is determined to find time to explore Japan and other non-Western cultures in the future, for now he joins his family in repatriating to the Netherlands where he will study industrial design at the Technical University of Eindhoven. Mike, we wish you all the best in this next big step. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Diepstraden. Nolan is one of a small group of students who was with us in middle school, left us for a few years, and came back to complete his IB diploma. So changed, it took me three months to recognize him. Possessing an easygoing manner and an authentically positive outlook on life, it was a privilege to have him back in our classrooms and on our tennis courts. The sport taught him commitment and resilience. But Nolan has always been a role model to his peers and adult alike, and his support of others on and off the court is legendary. Nolan is leaving his options open for his next studies. 
He is heading to one of the three most bustling cosmopolitan cities in Europe. Milan, Madrid, or St. Gallen. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Noel and de Ever since he was in our primary school, Moritz has been an overachiever. It's no surprise that this intellectually and athletically gifted young man has needed his friends to keep him grounded at times. He means it when he describes himself as amb ambitious and diligent. There are very few who would have managed the balance needed during these last two years to demonstrate that his legs can run as quickly as his brain can think. There are few people as determined and gifted to succeed as Moritz. The biomedical engineering department at Boston University better prepare itself for this young man arriving with an athletic scholarship for running. Ladies and gentlemen, Meritz Ebsko. That Patrick was one of two students selected by his peers to speak to you today comes as no surprise, for he is deeply respected in his year group for his generosity of spirit, authentic voice, and eloquent speaking style. Patrick teaches, teachers appreciate that as a role model, he, ma he makes deep and meaningful contributions to class discussions the cultural norm. Always full of fun, he gyrated his way across stage as the lemur King Julian from Madagascar during Wacky Week and declares himself a proud of surviving 18 years as an Everton fan. With a sense for reception, we will miss him as he heads to the University of York in the UK to study history with plans to attend law school in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Falk. Vincent is a man of impeccable manners. When one combines this with a warm and inclusive nature, it is clear that his personality will take him far in life. However, it is equally true that he has a bright and inquisitive mind with a work ethic to match. Vincente knows that true happiness is founded on the success that comes with effort. What more can we say when I asked Miss Foster to describe him and she told me he's a lovely boy. So, so, so nice. <laughs> Vincente has the enviable ability to simultaneously take his academic progress very seriously, but himself less so. He now heads to the Un United Kingdom to study a degree in computer science at the University of Leeds in the United Kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, Vincente Filiu. Rokas is a unique person with some very special gifts. Anyone who has taught him will know that he is a profound thinker and considers problems from every angle. His service project, bringing Lithuanian citizens to Lausanne for medical care and hosting them, tells you everything you need to know about this purposely enigmatic young man. Ruckus now makes the relatively unusual choice of destination as he heads to Singapore to study applied physics at Nanyang Technological University. Ruckus is an individual and his contribution to the world will be both significant and on his own terms. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruckus Garvsta. Ambitious, lively, and surprisingly competitive if there's a cahoot at stake. Luke can also go under the radar when he slips into his quiet and unassuming character. A deep thinker, he's a dedicated student who works hard for his accomplishments. The other half of a dynamic duo with Jean-Luc, Luke has a remarkable ability to test twin despite sitting on opposite sides of a room. 
Perhaps as an attestment to excellent study skills and exam prep habits, we are sure these practices will serve him well as he moves to the UK to study mechanical engineering at Longborough University. Ladies and gentlemen, Luke Gibbons. The face behind the saxophone and a longtime member of Saxy4, Marcus brings a sense of fun, drive, and a listening ear to all he does. As a fierce and hardworking member of the boys' varsity basketball team, he honed his skills with relentless practice and drills, eventually playing to great success this year. A multifaceted musician, academic, and sportsman, Marcus's decision to study electronics with music at the University of Glasgow is a slam dunk for his future. Ladies and gentlemen, Marcus Justiniani. Another incredible musician, as we will witness later, Adi has a confidence on stage that is only matched by her sanguine approach to everything life throws at her. Whether it's playing piano, singing rock and roll, or her, or, uh, her own harrowing melodies, Adi does it with joy, precision, and heart. She even taught herself to play the accordion during, during COVID lockdown, serenading us all during lunchtime with her new skills. Even if, even if it is from far away, we look forward to seeing her on stage in the future as she heads to Israel to study at the Academy of Music Education and Performance in the hopes of pursuing music therapy and performance in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, Adi Gurinan. Amit's contribution to the collective memory of ISL, like his sister, will be from seeing him on stage. From drama in his younger years to leaving us spellbound as the frontman for Jam Nation at times, Amit has always made us smile and kept us entertained. His other passion is sport and particularly basketball. He now plans to head to university here in Switzerland to study physiotherapy and sports science. That his ultimate goal is to work in a service profession is very fitting for Amit. His people skills are legendary, and his easygoing manner would put anyone at ease. It's been our pleasure, Amit. Ladies and gentlemen, Amit Grinley. The model of modern, mas modern masculinity, we admire Diego's strong values of inclusivity and exceptional strengths in empathy and communication. Entrepreneurial to the core, Diego knows how to turn it on when it matters most, but also how to have a good time. The owner of an Instagram page rating top football players, Homeroom became a little more lively from the debates he initiated. As he also is the owner of the website manager, or sorry, as he is also the website manager for an online cookbook targeting first year university students, we know those around him will not go hungry, even if it's mostly pasta on the menu. Diego, all the best, whether you end up deciding to study mechanical engineering in the UK, Europe, or Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, Diego Hackle. Another legacy. When you are the last of four ISL graduates and your mom works at the school, it's a special day. <laughs> the Harding family certainly left the most independent child until last. With a fabulous sense of humor, her kindness and practical advice are valued by all. Possessing a generous and open heart, her interest in proving the lives of others drives her decision to study international development and economics at the Uni University of Bath in the UK. We suspect that the Bath football team will also find a place for ISL's varsity team captain. Despite being lovely in life, Sophie's compassion does not extend to the visiting opposition on the pitch. 
UK university football teams, you have been warned. Ladies and gentlemen, Sophie Harding. Both quiet and unassuming, Ross may be the last person you'd guess to be torpedoing down the ski slopes in the ISL ski team. As the humble young man Ross is, he never promotes himself or his achievements, but rather inspires through action. Using his holidays to teach ski lessons in Verbier, his patience is surely only surpassed by the energy and back-breaking strength needed to coach the tiniest skiers out there. We are proud of Ross's growth during his IB diploma as he dug deep to apply maximum effort when it mattered most. Keep this up, Ross, as you head to the University of Exeter to study business management. Ladies and gentlemen, Ross Johansson. We and Macy never dared hope that we would keep her for the entirety of middle school and her high school life. Conscientious, diligent, and with a truly infectious smile, Macy makes everyone around her happy. Simultaneously, she's a leader and a role model among her peers, working hard to raise equality issues about gender here in our school. Whip smart, fierce on the basketball court, and as active as anyone, Macy has modelled what balance looks like and has remained her true self. Macy now heads to New York University in her home country and it has been a pleasure. Macy, keep hold of that effervescent personality. Ladies and gentlemen, Macy John. IB diploma requires students to study one science, but it's also possible to take two. Marintha, on the other hand, has studied all three through her diploma in order to prepare for her Dutch uni entry exams. At the same time as balancing this academic feat, Marintha juggles playing hockey with her team and a heartwarming passion of hers, working with the Rabbit Rescue Center. It goes without saying that Marintha is both intelligent and meticulously organized with her time. She leaves us today to study, to head home to the Netherlands, where she will study pharmacy, pharmacology at the University of Utrecht. Ladies and gentlemen, Marintha Kebel. Whether being prompted in class discussions or planning for her future studies, Laura may have more questions than answers. Indeed, those of us who do not know her well may mistake her trepidation for a lack of planning and preparation. In reality, though, Laura has mastered the art of living in the moment and has a work-life balance that would be enviable of even the most Zen adults. Fully cognizant that to enjoy life, one must focus on the journey rather than the destination, Laura's green streak often prompted her to bike the journey to school. Resilient, adventurous, and spontaneous, we look forward to seeing where her gap year takes her next year. Ladies and gentlemen, Laura Keller. Despite being very slightly younger than many of her peers, Olivia has a wise head on her young shoulders. And she uses it to give everything that she does her full commitment. This is a student who describes herself as having worked herself half to death for internal assessments. However, she has also ex excelled all over the school, particularly on the sports field and on its stage. Olivia is a natural optimist and a kind and supportive mentor for younger students and peers. Her work with autism awareness is particularly worth a mention. Olivia, a gap year awaits before a degree in biomedical science in the United Kingdom. While some might pass the 12 months in bed, we know yours will be full of activity and laughter. Ladies and gentlemen, Olivia Kenyon.
Having arrived at ISL after her peers were already months into their IV diploma program, the very fact that Sophie has finished with such a plum is an attestation to her academic ability and sheer determination. It, is cer it certainly has not always been an easy time, for she has had to fight a long and valiant but ultimately unsuccessful battle with Mr. Lloyd about the spelling of some pretty important English words. Always open-minded, though, she has remained remarkably good-humored about the constant nagging, and as with everything she does, just got on with things. With another move ahead, we wish Sophie all the best for next year at University of Maastricht in the Netherlands, where she will major in global studies. Ladies and gentlemen, Sophie Kessler. Maxim possesses natural charm, easy manners, and a self-depreciating sense of humor. He is an uncommon person with the common touch. He can get along with anyone. He is also completely unflappable. No matter how bad a day at school he may be having, he always convinces himself, and often us, that actually he'll be okay in the end, and it will all come good. Miraculously, it always does. As Maxim now heads to London or Geneva to study business management, we have no worries or concerns about both his happiness and his success in life. Whatever comes next, we have no doubt Maxim will thrive. Ladies and gentlemen, Maxim Kabilev. Ben never waits for someone else to tell him the answer when he knows he can build a deeper understanding by finding it for himself. It's this, behind, it's this blend of intrinsic motivation and inherent curiosity that his teachers admire most about him. While he's a reserved student, he will undoubtedly let you know with the tiniest smirk that he's picked on up on a sarcastic or humorous connection hidden well beneath the surface of a class discussion. The wheels are always turning in Ben's head, and a little, get by, little gets by him without notice. It is with our utmost sincerity that we send this dedicated and self-directed learner off to Glasgow Caledonian, where he will study physiotherapy. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Karalfi. Another student to disappear as a rambunctious middle schooler to return as an adult for the IB diploma. Organized, enthusiastic, and remarkably punctual, Victoria has a knack for judging, juggling 10 projects all at once while simultaneously competing the morning wordle. Whilst her peers are still trying to scrape their sleepy heads off the desk in homeroom, She's already accomplished half a day's work. Never one to leave anyone behind, though. It has been with care and a real sense of humanity that she has campaigned for autism awareness at school. She'll be sorely missed on the ISL volleyball courts, but we are confident Victoria's innate desire to help are well suited to the decision to study medicine at Jaglionian University in Krakow. Ladies and gentlemen, Victoria Kitlinska. We've now reached the end of the first half of our student speeches. To give you a musical reprieve from listening to us speak, we are pleased to introduce Jam Nation, a band revival project by Mark Rebass from his Year 11 personal project, which has morphed to take a life of its own in these last two years. Rather appropriately today, they'll be playing I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor. I'm going to sit down.
First I was afraid, I was petrified Kept thinking I could never leave without you by my side But then I spent so many nights just thinking how you did me wrong And I grew stronger and I learned how to get along and so you're back from outer space I just walked in to find you here with that sad look upon your face I should have changed that stupid lock I should have made you leave your key If I had known for just one second You'd be back to bother me Go now, go Walk out the door Just turn around now Cause you're not welcome anymore Weren't you the one who tried to hurt me with goodbye? Do you think I crumbled? You think I live down and die? I'm not, not I. I will survive. Oh, as long as I know how to love, I know I'm still alive. I've got all my life to live, and I've got all my love to give, and I'll survive. I will survive. to fall apart though I tried hard to mend the pieces of my broken heart when I spent oh so many nights just feeling sorry for myself I used to cry but now I hold my head up high and you see me somebody new I'm not a chained up little person I'm still in love with you and so you felt like dropping in and just expect me to be free well now I'm saving all my loving for someone who's loving me Goodbye, did you think I crumble? So 
much. Yeah, thank you very much, Jam Nation. We are so happy. We'll have one more song by Jam Nation in the second half. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for an intermission. In 10 minutes, we will put out a little announcement to come back to your seats. But before then, you have a few minutes to go down to use the restrooms on the garden level just below. See you back in a few minutes.
Okay, welcome back. As you may have noticed, our graduates have stealthily swapped seats with those who came before them alphabetically. Starting with William Cluck, we will continue celebrating each of our individual students before enjoying a few more musical treats this afternoon. A self-proclaimed nerd with an impressive bank of general knowledge, William can probably tell you the answers to your questions faster than you can get out your mobile phone to Google them. Always friendly and inclusive, anyone is invited to join his impromptu study sessions before tests. Whether or not any of his peers could actually glean any last minute knowledge from him as he talked through details of complex biology concepts at breakneck speed, though, is yet to be confirmed. Always dressed to impress for school spirit events, often including lights, William's positive presence at school will be missed as he heads to the USA to study quantitative biosciences and engineering at the Colorado School of Mines. Ladies and gentlemen, William Cluck. Florence is a remarkable young person. ISL has been an essential part of her life for as long as I can remember. A stalwart of ISL's ski team and fortunate to possess limitless energy, it is in visual arts where this creative and inspiring individual comes alive. Nobody really doubted that her next steps would be to study fine art. This is especially true for her art teacher who talks often about her talent and anyone who attended the final IB diploma exhibition. Edinburgh University is the fortunate institution which shares in her artistic growth, her benevolent goodwill, and her ready demeanor. Ladies and gentlemen, Florence Kroll. While Marissa only joined ISL this year, the outside eye would never guess that she hasn't been part of the woodwork since the very beginning. Joyful, friendly, and incredibly adaptable, Marissa doesn't sweat the small stuff. When she missed her own class's homeroom photo, she simply jumped in with another class to say cheese. A true problem solver with a passion for debate, Marissa has been a dedicated Model United Nations delegate. Her passion for international relations and drive for fairness and equity make this multilingual young person an excellent candidate to study law with a Bachelor's of French Law at the University of Westminster, UK. Ladies and gentlemen, Marissa Kvistad. Matteo joined ISL as an energetic and good-natured young Italian boy who spoke not a word of English. However, with enduring positivity, he quickly moved from zero to hero, and he's taken the rigours of the last two years in his stride. A lover of the frivol frivolity, Matteo says that his single proudest moment at school was to come dressed as a rhino. It tells us everything we need to know. We are proud of, his kind care, of this kind, caring and accomplished young man who now heads to the University of Leeds to study international business. Good luck understanding the Yorkshire accent. Ladies and gentlemen, Matteo Laugeri. Daniel is a kind, physical, and metaphorical giant. Gentle, modest, and unassuming, Daniel is always happy to let others dominate. The journey through high school for this laconic young man has been as careful and considered as everything he does. We always felt Daniel needed a little more sleep. However, when we saw his reply to something he was particularly proud of at ISL, he wrote that he could bench press 105 kilograms. <laughs> we realized he had been just saving his energy for the gym. A student who, finishes the IB who finished the IB diploma with hard work and complete commitment, Ecole Hotelier de Lausanne, awaits this impeccably mannered young man. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Danielle Leani. Just as our quote in this year's graduation pamphlet suggests, we ask students to leave the world a better place, and Domatius does just exact. A crusader for justice, Domatius' sense of integrity was evident from her first year at ISL when she bravely stood on stage to tell the story about sexual assault in which she passionately argued for the human right of safety and security for all. Always careful and considerate, Domatiu is a talented and articulate communicator whose words go far. That she has chosen to study international development at King's College London is of no surprise to any of us. The world will be better off for her care. Ladies and gentlemen, Domatiu de Kumpf. Some students have creativity in their souls. Gabriella Leach is one of those people whose artistic sensibility is at the core of her existence. She's already an, enduring, she's already an enduringly positive person whose infectious good mood can light up a lesson, but on the stage, she becomes truly alive. The star of so many school drama performances, our main disappointment is that COVID surely robbed us of many more. Intelligent, ebullient and kind, Gabby now heads to Costa Rica to teach English on a gap year before heading to university in the UK. Those young students are going to love you. Ladies and gentlemen, Gabriela Leach. Gargi Manek is one of those exceptional young people who combines the emotional intelligence of a wise adult with the energy and positivity of youth. For she is simply a lovely young person. Her organization and email reply speed are both legendary. A contributor to the high, model United Nations, creative writing, music and singing, Gargi, Gargi seems to have endless talents. The person all of her teachers wish they'd actually been themselves at school, she now heads to King's College London to study international relations. Global diplomacy needs people just like this. Ladies and gentlemen, Gargi Manik. I feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Marlow is simply a legend. He's been at ISL for most of his life. Every conversation I have ever heard about him has been complimentary and kind. He is an authentically generous, positive and polite young person. Furthermore, unsurprisingly with mum and dad as teachers, he is also great with children and no parent could hope for a better role model with better values. A central member of ISL's eco-society, environmental protection, has always been a passion for Frank. An un <laughs> if I'd seen that photo before, Frank. <laughs> An undergraduate degree, not in fashion, in environmental studies awaits him in Canada or the United Kingdom. However, before then comes Swiss military service. I'm convinced Frank is far too nice to be a soldier. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Marlow. Eon either works at double speed or doesn't sleep. Whichever it is, he's managed to complete the IB diploma while simultaneously writing and publishing a book of short stories about medical ethics, working as a collective of international students to curate a music, musical website, and facilitating several school projects as student parliament co-president. 
A questioner of the status quo and deeply committed to student voice, Eon acts with integrity, listens well to others, and is refreshingly polite and professional. I will miss his regular visits and emails about school issues, but I know that bigger things await as he heads to San Francisco to explore a range of interdisciplinary courses while staying on the medicine track at Stanford University. Ladies and gentlemen, Eon Martinez. A phenomenal mathematician, Ethan is an out-of-the-box thinker who has a level of creativity and flexible thinking rarely seen for his age. You can trust that any decision he has made has been examined carefully from every perspective, for while Athen may be vocally quiet, his brilliant mind never stops turning. Equally chill and meticulous, Athan's second home is behind his sax, where he regularly wows audiences as, mem as a member of Saxy Four and Jam Nation. As one of his kind as his signature hairstyle, Athan has made a fitting choice to move to the University of California, Berkeley, where he will study mathematics. Ladies and gentlemen, Athan Masuris. When he stands up from that chair in a moment, you'll start to understand why Lucas, Lucas Merkel is in the Swiss under-20s volleyball team. Aside from crushing his opponents on the courts, Lucas's academic interests lie in mathematics and physics. As his economics teacher, Lucas has never allowed me to believe that a social science could ever complete with these real subjects. It's no surprise that he heads off to the Technical University of Munich to study engineering science. However, don't be fooled that Lucas is a one-dimensional person. He is as kind, funny, and easygoing as any student with a heart as big as his shoulders. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucas Merkel. A creative soul through and through, Neve uses her artistic talents to share the untold stories of victims who would otherwise be smothered by societal norms. Never afraid of a difficult conversation, she finds a delicate balance of both care and provocation to open up discussions of equity, safety, and female empowerment. Her initiatives with Pride Alliance Group have been both notable and highly visible, especially last year when she helped transform the school into a colorful celebration of diversity and inclusion during Pride Month. Neve, as you head to Paris to study fashion design at the Institut Supérieur des Arts Appliqués, we hope you continue questioning and keep those difficult dialogues going through your work. Ladies and gentlemen, Neve Lanigan. When you're the oldest of four children, whether you like it or not, you're forced to develop a caring and supportive personality. However, from the depths of primary school into middle school and via a short stay in Argentina, Thea has always extended gentle support and reassurance to her friends and even some adults. Thea has guts and she showed great courage to face her fears head on. Everyone who witnessed her school-wide presentation on sexual harassment will recall her bravery. Taya tells us she might take a gap year before studying psychology at the University of Bath in the UK. However, for now, she's heading to Norway to make some friends. Those future friends will be lucky people indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Taya Mustad. Leonardo Oliveira Franca is a name which has dominated my email inbox for the last two years. 
No weekend has passed without a complex emailed question about the intricacies of expansionary fiscal policy in emerging economies or some other Sunday morning delight. You cannot but love the commitment and industriousness of this persistent young man. King's College London is Leonardo's next destination. He'll study management and modern languages. Commitment and hard work rule every time, Leo. We have no doubt you're going places. I hope your lecturers check their emails on the weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, Leonardo Oliveira Franca. With an uncanny ability to remain positive and find humor in any situation, James's teachers would describe him as humble, hardworking, and with an innate sense of care for those around him. James, on the other hand, chose pretty, cute, and beautiful as, th <laughs> as three adjectives to describe himself on a recent Future Plans survey. Always the jokester. He is an excellent collaborator, whether in academic classwork, on the basketball court, or in organizing the next group photo with his friends. Everyone enjoys his good company. James leaves us today to study history at the University of York with the plan to transfer to law the following year. Ladies and gentlemen, James O'Sullivan. Watching Annette grow from a young high schooler into the poised and accomplished, confident young person graduating today has been our personal pleasure. The Pride Alliance Group has benefited immeasurably from a calm, focused and nurturing leadership, and I know that she is proud of her role as a leader. Annette, you will remain close by as you head to Haute Etude Commerciale at the University of Lausanne for an undergraduate degree in economics. Sometimes called the dismal science, the profession will benefit from your compassion and your care. And we plan to benefit from having you back as a guest speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, Annette Parr. Do not be fooled by Jean-Luc's gentle nature, for beneath it lies a fierce tenacity that stops at nothing. Whether doggedly maintaining his fitness plan regardless of academic pressures from school, or leaping over roadblocks on his physics IA and extended essay, Jean-Luc stays focused on his endgame. A minimalist at heart, this stoic young person has a funny side too. Half of a dynamic duo with his friend Luc, a bit Burton Ernie, or Muppets depending on the mood, he provides some much appreciated comic relief to his homeroom. Jean-Luc plans to take a gap year to complete his military service and then pursue studies in computer science in Switzerland. Ladies and gentlemen, Jean-Luc Piget. A master of appreciating the small things, not the least of was when teachers remember the accent aigu on her name, Zoe, hit the ground running the moment she arrived at ISL two years ago. This multifaceted young person has added considerably to the school through her positively, positivity, resourcefulness, and most notably, detailed research and leadership in the gender equity as part of the team's organizing STEM week at school. The fact that Zoe loves running, even when no one is watching, sums her up perfectly. For no one needs to make her do anything. This burning drive within her will go far as she heads to the University of York in the UK to study English literature, quite the accomplishment as a native Francophone. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe Pochet. Michael joined ISL for the final three years of his school life, for the first time outside his native Greece and never, ever been educated in English. 
Like so many young people, he formed these friendships first and foremost on the basketball court. However, for Michael, sport is more than a hobby, and his next step is a degree in sports management at the University of Applied Sciences in Amsterdam. Wise souls in our audience today will testify that honesty, good communication, and a keen interest in others are key to effective management in the sports or any other arena. For this, Michael is fortunate as a nicer, more authentic guy you could never ask to meet. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Polakis. Bright-eyed, diligent, and thoughtful, Ella's the first to say hello in the morning to her homeroom teachers. Do not be fooled by this kind and open-hearted young person, though, for she is a force to be reckoned with. Checked by nationality, she trained with the Australian snowboard team and is one tough cookie. After a big crash on the Sass Bay ski trip, her lack of tears led her doctor and Miss Foster to believe nothing was wrong until they saw the serious collarbone break on her x-rays. Resilient in all she does, Ella will be missed as she heads to the Instituto Maggioni in London to study fashion business. Ladies and gentlemen, Ella Provaznikova. Sorry, Ella. <laughs> Uninhibited, unfiltered, and with a wild abandon for sharing some pretty alternative points of view and debate, Daniel keeps his teachers on their toes. Most notably has been his uncanny ability to trick Miss Foster, his economics teacher, into answering the questions she set for homework, even without realizing he was, what he was up to. Always service-minded, Daniel keeps things light and smooth as he was the provider of the best playlist on the Cambodia trip. It is of no surprise, then, that after he completes his mandatory Swiss military training, he will join the École Hôtelier de Lausanne to study business management. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Radden. Rebecca Vivara is a formidable force, a natural leader who makes it cool to both be herself and stand up for her convictions. She's intensely interested in visual culture with a rare level of knowledge about any and every film. She uses this as a way to define and shape her own experiences of the world. No prizes for guessing that she heads to study a degree in film studies and literature and perhaps a master's in film after, away to Rebecca at the St. Andrews University in Scotland. A skillful and thoughtful student of the arts, with a wise head on her shoulders and someone with the drive to change the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Rebecca Vavada. None of us have ever doubted Andreas. A natural academic and owner of a strategic and well-structured mind, his next destination of EPFL to study computer science is an ideal choice. Andreas is highly disciplined. Everything that he does, he commits to fully with enviable results. He is, a proud, he is rightly proud of his musical progression, particularly as the drummer of Jam Nation. We are equally proud of his contribution to service learning, most notably his work with the primary school in developing autism awareness. Always working towards being his best self, Andreas models what it means to live our school values. Ladies and gentlemen, Andreas Reinhardt's. One of ISL's longest standing students, Mark has grown in tandem with the school. His pathway and ours are intertwined. Everyone recognises that two things light Mark's fire, music and the stage. What it would have been had COVID not robbed us of the m many opportunities to witness his various performances. It still remains our pleasure to have watched Mark grow from the only boy on stage in the primary school dance shows, 
through the middle school musical productions to the cooler and cool front man for Jam Nation. It's time for Mark's stage to get much bigger as he heads off to the Institute of Contemporary Music Performance to study music production. Mark, we are extremely proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Ribas. Alexander, while some of the photographs you attempted to submit for the slides today were of questionable content, we know that your sense of humor is enjoyed by at least some of your peers. Chill and caring, you've been a loyal friend and a confidant as you chipped away at the challenges of the full IB diploma alongside your closest friends. Always about so much more than just academics, though, Alexander's creative side led to a commissioned project writing the music for podcast series. An inspiring artist, perhaps this work could be a perfect side hustle to finance his uni life as he heads to the Netherlands where he will study global challenges at Leiden University College. Sorry, Leiden University College. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexander Ridley. Tomasz, or Tomek, is never afraid to be his totally authentic self, even on the days when his teachers would prefer that he wasn't. Few students are as hard to ignore as this intelligent, articulate, and sometimes maddening young man. Tomek is a lover of internet, internet culture, which at time has caused his teachers to wonder about the subtext of his class contributions. I warn you, do not type into Google what he tells you to. This is a young man who is certainly going far and on his own terms. Economics and finance in London ultimately await. However, he has urged me to flex that his gap year will involve, revolve around working as a, do, as a driver for Uber Eats. <laughs> we can only assume it is the evening shift. To use Tomek's own language, we wish ISL's very own Giga Chad all the best. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Alexander. Insightful, intuitive, passionate, and at times impossible to steer, Maxima has remarkable self-conviction. Mr. Knob shares that she is the most talented painter he has ever taught. On tours of the school, I always took time to make a special stop to show off her work, which is not only technically impressive, but shows a deep love and sense of care for her family. Inseparable from her closest friends who also share her certainty that rules prohibiting water balloons or eating in the study space upstairs simply don't apply, it is Maxima's loyalty and independent mind that will take her far as she heads to New York to study architecture at the Parsons School of Design. Ladies and gentlemen, Maxima Schiller. When asked if there was anything we shouldn't say about him in today's ceremony, Josh replied, roast me. The problem is that no matter who we asked, his teachers only have kind things to say about this gentle soul. The closest I got was a few musings about how on earth he could fuel his future dreams of sailing around the world only on cheese and toast. You see, Josh is another member of the now infamous university cookbook team. And while we are now certain he won't starve as he heads to the Netherlands to study in, at ma the Maastricht Science Program, we highly suggest adding a few veggies to those pasta dishes. Ladies and gentlemen, Joshua Schweighauser. Still waters run deep. And those who know Hong Tang best know there is much more than initially meets the eye. 
reserved and more than, enough, more than often a little bit late, either in person or with the homework he promised you, when Han Tang does speak or write, this young man contributes with such depth of knowledge that his intellectual age comes across well beyond his years. The baritone sax player for the Saxy Four Quartet, Hong Tang keeps beat much in the way as he walks to his own tune in life. A keen observer of the world around him, Hong Tang is constantly measuring, calculating and analysing, so his choice to attend EPFL to study computer science is perfectly suited to his skills and interests. Ladies and gentlemen, Hong Tang Sheng. Jack is one of those students for whom you dig deep for patience because you know that his heart exceeds his sense of mischief. Practically born with a football at his feet, few realise that Jack has diligently coached young boys at football, acting as both a role model and mentor. We wondered if he ever saw his younger self in those mischievous middle schoolers. Jack, you occasionally made us wonder if this day would ever come. You've always reassured us adults that we needn't worry, you'll pull it off in the end. Your growing awareness of your potential and the dedication in the dying days of the IB diploma may just prove you right. We certainly hope so. A return to his native country of Scotland to attend university awaits. His cheekiness will fit right in. It's a national characteristic. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Spinks. Another talented footballer, Alan is deeply appreciated by those around him for his exceptional emotional intelligence and genuine positivity. Our Poland trip in year 11 served as an unusual indu induction to ISL, but from the first days, it was clear that Alan always wears his heart on his sleeve wherever he goes. The past three years of attending rigorous football training, coaching primary football, and co-captaining the ISL boys team to second place in ECS, have all been excellent preparation for the challenges ahead. Alan leads us today to study for a dual degree in business administration and data analytics at IE University in Spain, a balancing act we're sure he's more than ready for. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan Stocker. <laughs> there you go. You've got a fan club out there. <laughs> All right. It takes sustained courage to advocate for issues of equity that have been and still are well ingrained in societal norms. And yet Thomas does just this. He's one of the few young men at school who actively and publicly campaigns for gender equity because he understands that by empowering women and addressing issues in masculine toxicity and paternity rights, everyone wins. Fun-loving, open-minded, and hardworking, there is no doubt in our minds that the world will be better off for Thomas's advocacy. That he has chosen to study international development with economics at Bath University is absolutely fitting. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Stevens. Few students we can remember were as keen to join ISL as Victor was. A student at a local school, we did not immediately have a place for him when he first applied. However, Victor was determined to join us. When, we fi when he finally arrived, we realised it had been our mistake and we should have found a place years earlier, for it was us that had been missing out. Victor is not one for gushing platitudes. He is a watcher and a listener before he is a talker. He now heads to the University of Leeds in Yorkshire to study business marketing. Yorkshire folk are known for their straight-talking, 
honest and open, but warm ways. You may have found your spiritual home. Ladies and gentlemen, Victor Stockland. Many of us remember Lauren Strano as the energetic, positive, and friendly 11-year-old as she moved from the primary school to the secondary school, and what a young adult she's grown up to be. Lauren is somebody who is fundamentally humble at her core. She's been a central member of ISAL's ski team and is, and is admired by her teachers for her understated intellectualism that even includes an extended essay on the externalities of honeybees. One of the biggest areas of growth in both education and economics is the application of cognitive science. It is therefore wonderful to see the first student from ISL that we know of who heads to study this subject at McGill University in Montreal. Ladies and gentlemen, Lauren Strano. <laughs> Passionate, outspoken, and extremely driven, Chloe leaves behind her a legacy of social justice. She contributed to both school development and policy in diversity, equity, and inclusion, and understands exactly what it means in practice. A woman of action, Chloe uses the development of school spirit as a catalyst for inclusion. She navigated a constant slew of restrictions to lead the Stuco events team as they brought back Wacky Week, the spring ball, and countless feel-good activities for students. While Chloe leaves us today to study law at Durham in the UK, we hope to see her around in the future as she plans to continue her work on anti-racism and social justice as an ISL alumna. Ladies and gentlemen, Chloe Izuklu. Nicole has an uncanny ability to do the right thing. In addition to being a pleasure to be with, she is intelligent, articulate, and socially aware. Nicole is a lover of all things equine, and this talented young person has combined competitive show jumping and the rigors of the ID diploma with relative ease, at least to the outside observer. From academics to International Women's Day, Nicole has done it all and rarely stopped smiling. She now heads to the University of Maastricht to study biology and biomedical sciences. Ladies and gentlemen, Nicole Weasel. Some characters have personalities that are larger than life, and speeches like this one practically write themselves. Luca Vaboom is one of those guys. Positive and polite, even in the mornings, he is someone difficult to ignore and always considers others. When asked to list his future plans for today, most wrote about pursuing a master's degree, a gap year, or even the Swiss Army. Luca, on the other hand, wrote that his future plans include to marry a beautiful woman and settle down. <laughs> Luckily, he also mentioned that on the way to his future happiness, he'll be heading to Leiden University in the Netherlands to study philosophy. Perhaps those two goals are not mutually exclusive. We all miss you, Luca, and your energy. Ladies and gentlemen, Luca Verboom. Joanna can lull you into a full sense of security, as many of her less mature peers have sometimes found out. She is independent in her thinking and passionate about equality and equity for female rights. Quietly confident and never afraid to stand up for herself or what she feels is right, Joanna is unashamedly her own person, and what a magnificent one that is. She leaves us now to, stop, to start her gap year in the far north of Norway, inside the Arctic Circle. Luckily for Joanna, she has the personal warmth and fiery spirit 
that will allow her to survive no matter how cold the temperature. Ladies and gentlemen, Joanna Von Plessen. An absolute people person through and through. Anyone who gets to start their day off with a little bit of Paris charm and excellent conversation skills should consider themselves lucky indeed. While her peers can barely lift their eyes in homeroom, Hara's perky energy is luckily contagious as she lifts the spirits of those around her. When asked if there is anything especially unique about Hara, her IB diploma teacher cited her uncanny ability to connect her cat to any discussion. Funny, hardworking, and conscientious, Hara is a loyal friend who carries an upbeat presence that will be missed as she heads to Maastricht, Netherlands to study digital society. Ladies and gentlemen, Hara Vorman. In a year group that is frequently recognized for conscientious work to make the world around them a better place, there are some students who stand out, not for their loud personalities, but rather for their humble actions. Lucy is always working behind the scenes, whether raising awareness for equity and human rights, sharing her passion for football with primary students, or collecting donations for the Carton du Coeur. On top of a very busy IB diploma schedule, she also took on the role of student voice in the development of the school's diversity, equity, and inclusion policy. Never any doubt that Lucy cares deeply for the world around her. She is heading to Scotland where she will study sustainable development at St. Andrews. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucy Wappet. Few of the young people graduating today have such a gap between what they are actually capable of and what they believe they are. For I have spent two years convincing Maya that she is equally as bright and as inquisitive as she is dedicated. Medicine at UNIL awaits this multilingual young woman. It is one of the most demanding undergraduate programs upon, any, on, upon which any of our graduates will embark. However, Miss Gifford and I know that, without a doubt, if one student can do it, it is Maya. There are many reasons for this. However, to be honest, anyone who's ever read her handwriting will know she was born to be a doctor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Maya Watson. A doer to the bone, Alyssa likes to cut through the fluff. Much like her cast project, Curiosity Killed the Cat, she gets straight to the heart of a problem and explores all perspectives when searching for a solution. A seasoned journalist for the high, Alyssa is an excellent communicator with an inquisitive eye. Her down-to-earth nature and great sense of humor can get anyone talking. Her exceptional organizational skills also brought awareness of gender e equity issues to the forefront on International Women's Day. As Alyssa heads to Bernard College of Columbia University in NYC, her independent and curious nature will suit her well in her choice of major, sociology, economics, and political science. Ladies and gentlemen, Alyssa Way. A man of few words, those Thomas does spare us are usually to convey a bit of dry humor or a sly remark. There are no doubts about the scientific and mathematical abilities of this ambitious young person. Perhaps it's his analytical mind that helped him to keep his cool despite being continuously nagged by his French teacher with the same comments on his writing. Advice she hopes he followed for his exams. Both conscientious and highly organized, Thomas's strong skills will put him in good stead as he heads to the UK to study mechanical engineering with business finance at the University College London. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Whiteley. <laughs> A 
What a pleasure to introduce Austin, the former ISL Student Parliament President, a man of the people. Be it in the corridors of power, on the basketball court, or between the goalposts in the Varsity Boys football team, you can always rely on Austin to bring some light-hearted humour to proceedings. Not one to lead from the front or to stop his mate leading for him, Austin is a student favourite. Another potential future doctor, medicine in Poland or Italy, awaits the ever affable Austin. Will Shaw, he be a safe a pair of hands in the operating theatre, just as he is between the goalposts. Ladies and gentlemen, Austin Young. <laughs> John Yazbek is a kind, caring, and diligent young person who brings a ray of sunshine to lessons, at least when he's not in the corridor filling up his water bottle. Frankly, I'm surprised he's made it this far through the ceremony. All of his teachers, including me, have loved having John in class. He is an inquisitive and determined soul, and if you teach him, you better be ready to answer some questions. We are proud now that he had heads to Erasmus University in the Netherlands to study economics. He has only half jokingly reassured me that it wasn't I that lit the spark. <laughs> the subject needs all the optimistic and socially minded young people it can get. Ladies and gentlemen, John Yazbek. Another fan club out there. <laughs> <All right. laughs> that one's for you, Sarah. <laughs> All right. Calculating, intuitive, and meticulous with her thinking, Sarah has a knack for making the school rules work in her favor. Perhaps it is this ability to read others and measure her next move that paves an excellent foundation for her choice of studying sociology at the University of Amsterdam. That this move to the Netherlands could not come soon enough is no secret, as Sarah is more than ready to spread her wings in a newfound freedom after graduation. Having grown into her personal strength and confidence in this final year, she's a quiet and hardworking presence in the classroom who will be genuinely missed by all of her teachers. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Yolman. When your name starts with Y, you learn patience at an early age. <laughs> so it is with great pleasure that we introduce Selen Yilman as our last graduate today. Selen is a deeply creative, caring, and sensitive person who is always positive and loved and respected by her peers, particularly in visual arts. Her end of the IB Diploma exhibition was a thought-provoking exploration of her inner child, exploring rudimentary methods to paint directly and intuitively, developing imagery that's had its source in her own drawings from childhood. It's time now to move into adulthood, as fittingly, Selen heads to Instituto Marangoni in Milano to study fashion, business, communications, and media. Thank you for your resilience, Selen. For one last time today, ladies and gentlemen, Selen Yilman. So, the time has come, and it is with great pleasure that I present, present to you the International School of Lausanne's graduating class of 2022.
And thank you. Each year, led by the creative and talented Mr. Nobbs, the staff create a small farewell for the students that we would like to share with you today. We hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed filming it. As you can see, crossing ABBA and teachers with a healthy dose of parody can be quite a dangerous mix. <laughs> we had a really good time making it, and the class of 2022 is well worth the effort. As our last speakers at graduation, we'd like to present Gabriella Leach and Patrick Falk, who will be, will be speaking on behalf of the class of 2022. Oh, Fellow graduates, family, teachers, we are all gathered here today to celebrate the achievement of the class of 2022. As we go from students of the International School of Lausanne 
to alumni. Since the start of primary school for me, and the start of secondary school for me, ISL has been a place that we call home. As we progressed through the years, we took away many things with us. The end of primary school left us with our PYP exhibitions, which felt like the first step towards real schoolwork. The end of NYP left us with our personal projects and the diploma program with the severe case of sleep deprivation, but it's all been worth it in the end. A couple years ago, I used to try and imagine what the people in our year group would look like all grown up on our graduation day. I always waited for the moment when I would notice a sudden change, the moment when we transformed from children to adults, but of course, I never noticed it. And that's because for the last two years, we've truly coexisted in the same two buildings for five days a week together. We've been so closely connected that we became blind to changes that happened in front of us. But it's only when we look back at where we began in August 2020 that we realize how much we've grown and how far we've come together. In year 12, the start of the DP and the height of the pandemic, a few new faces came to join the class of 2022. And whilst we may have forgotten what most of our classmates and teachers actually looked like, we still made the most of a great year as we managed to find creative alternatives to our past activities, regardless of the challenging circumstances. Then came year 13. The pressure ramped up as the finish line approached. Despite the numerous breakdowns, the test crammings, and the lounge lockings, we powered through. We worked incredibly hard and gave our exams our absolute all, supporting each other right until the last moment. And we had a good time doing it too. And here we are, what may be for some of us 15 years and for others just one year later on our graduation day. This is finally it. The moment we part ways with ISL and our school lives for good. It hasn't been an easy ride, no doubt. With the struggles of TOK and dangerously due overdue cast reflections causing some pretty late nights for some. But those difficult times are what will stay with us as we remember our time here. When we look back, we will remember and maybe even miss the moments spent together, the smiles, the laughter, and let's not forget the tears as well. From pole dancing in Ski Week in Nonda to eating dodgy hot dogs from Zabka in Poland. From roasting our teachers to reiterating the primary school. Our class always brought a sense of fun to even the most unconventional situations. However, arguably the most special thing we shared was a unique ability to pull together as a year group when it mattered most whether that be on the football pitch in a game of World Cup or protesting the unjust lounge lockings. We obviously left things to the last minute, a habit I'm sure our teachers and parents greatly appreciated. But in the end, we always put in the effort for a large payoff. I'm sure none of us had envisioned the success of our final wacky week or the fun that we would have on our last day of school the night before they happened. But like always, year 13 came through in the end and the memories from these special times will stick with us forever. In a moment where we celebrate our achievement, it is always important to acknowledge those who made it possible. First of all, we would like to thank our fellow graduating students, all the girls and all the lads, plus Jack, for making school and the diploma so memorable. We would also like to thank all the staff at ISL for the continued support throughout our journey and for their genuine care for us, not only as students, but as human beings. Ms. Foster, you've been like a second mother to us all, and we can't thank you enough for all of your encouragement, kindness, and support over the last four years. When I think of the support provided by the teachers in my time at ISL, I'm always reminded of Mr. Ivett, who in 2016, following the passing of my grandfather, stayed with me at lunchtime for a week in order to help me prepare for a poem I would recite at his funerals. That is just one example of the countless acts of support from our teachers who have played a critical role in our collective su success throughout the years. Evidently, nothing in our lives, and especially in our education, could have been possible without our parents. Therefore, we'd like to thank all of the parents and families for the sacrifices they went through in order to ensure we all receive the best education possible here. Our parents... Oh. <laughs> Our parents were fundamental in keeping us motivated when there were a million other things we would have rather done. Thank you for putting up with us and the gray hairs we may have given you throughout the DP. We hope it didn't feel like you were doing the IB yourselves. It's easy in this moment to think retrospectively about the past, the people, and the parts of ourselves that we leave behind as we graduate today. But let's not forget about what we're also here to celebrate, the beginning of the future. As this chapter we have spent together finally comes to a close, a new and exciting one opens for each and every one of us. What lies ahead may be clear for some or slightly foggy for others. Nevertheless, we will take everything the last 14 years have taught us, like our world-class ping pong skills or the ability to skip lunch lines into whatever path we take in the future. Today we say goodbye, but today our lives begin. Cheers, Cheers to the, the class, class of 2022. 2022. <laughs>
Next, we get to enjoy Jam Nation's final songs as a member of Year 13. They will perform Tank by the Seatbelt. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you, Jam Nation, very much for your final song as ISL students. And thank you, Gabby and Patrick, for your speech. And thank you as well to every person who is here with us today or in person, whether in person or online, as you are part of a global community who has helped raise support and mold these wonderful young people who have just graduated today. Before joining you in the foyer to raise a glass in celebration, we'd like to ask you all to stand to give today's graduates one final round of applause as they exit the auditorium for the last time as ISL students. And so for the last time today, ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the International School of Lausanne's graduating class of 2022. Thank you.